back to another week on SL Rebuild. In this week, we're looking at another 106. Now, I promise you, this channel's not gonna be dedicated to 106s, but this one caught my eye. Let's have a look at it and see how bad it is. Okay, for those of you who don't know what a 106 Rally is, a 106 Rally, um, there are approximately 500 imported into the UK um, from 1997 to 1998, I believe. Um, they are a 1.6 engine with 103 brake horsepower, so they're proper fast, proper fast. Um, as you can see, this one here is um, in a really sorry state. So it looks like the front shocks have collapsed or there's no springs on there. Um, the wheels are gone, it looks pretty rusty and I probably overpaid for this. I overpaid because I kind of always wanted one. Um, and you know, there's a 106 GTI there. I really should stop buying these 106s. Um, so they are a 103 brake horsepower engine, 1.6, eight valve. If it's not been touched, most people um, put the 16 valve GTI engine in this. I can confirm this one is the standard 1.6 eight valve engine and it's looking extremely sorry for itself someone um, has decided to put some cool um, little things on the end there this this car looks like it's been part of the probably the 106 owners club and the rally register because it's been to rocket and french car show i went there when i was a kid with my gti and quicksilver it is a member or was a member of the 106 rally register and that means it probably was looked after at one point in its life very well the person I bought this off has been sitting in a warehouse for a number of years. Like most of these, they either go to the scrapyard, rot away on someone's drive, or people store them for later on and they can, you know, probably sell them for quite a bit more than what they're worth. I paid three and a half thousand pounds for this to get it back home. And that comes with some repair panels. Let's take a look inside and what did I get for three and a half thousand pounds? Not much. Okay, so the rally comes with a blue carpet. And these rally seats, which are completely mouldy. And um, they give me some repair, give me some repair panels. So these are sort of the bumper things that go on the wing brackets there. And these are the jacking points, which go under the car. They generally the first things to go on these cars. There was a whole lot of spares. I've got some side skirts, looks like from a Quicksilver, and a box full of new and used parts. But anyway, let me push this car out and we can take a better look around, see what we're dealing with. It, <laughs> this was bought sight unseen, so sight unseen is a, uh, generally speaking, you get those cars from Copart, you should probably go and look at these type of cars because it, apparently it runs, there's no battery, there's nothing in it. Yeah, I just put that just on there, just in case um, there was any coolant in there. I didn't want to freeze over winter, um, but we can take this off. Okay, so it looks like there has been a bit of work in this engine bay. Um, it looks like it's had a bit of a patch here um, under the ECU cover. They're the bits that normally rust and the inner fenders in here and the scuttle panel all looks in good shape, um, which is, you know, thankfully all right for the front. However, you know, rust does start creeping in really quick into these. I haven't had this started up yet. Um, there's no coolant or anything in there. It looks like that's a brand new radiator. Um, so first thing to do is push this back, unload all the junk in the car, give it a clean and see if I can get it started. There's no air box on it. There's no battery on here. The bonnet cable is off. So. Let's see what we can do. I'm mindful that I probably do need to check the timing belt under here. Because if it's been sitting for that long, that probably means, <laughs> that probably means it might be being a, a, bit, a bit frail. So let's push this back and clean it up. Let's get everything out of the car and take a look around. Yes, that car is a donor car to chop up and repair this one with. That's a standard 1.1, but the, the floors, etc., all the same. It's just the outside panels. So 
let's get everything out of this car, see what we're working with, then probably give it a clean. jack and some brake pads. Some quick silver side skirts. Old front brakes and calipers. Some arch trims. Some more arch trims. Another arch trim. Another arch trim. Uh, door pod. Panel. Hello, immobilizer. I'm glad this has been taken out. Really cool. Boost, no I can't boost. Voltage pod and RPM by RaceX. This is gonna be real sick in the car. <laughs> this is good, need this. Okay, first things first, let's have a look around this car. Oh, that's creaky. <clears throat> so here is the 106 Rally. Okay, is this the worst car I've ever bought? Probably. Does it have a bag's loads of potential? Yes. Have I already probably got too much money in it? Yes. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is 
actually give it a clean. Um, from those photos there, you can see there's no coolant in the radiator um, and the top of the engine is dry as hell. So I need to do a, a load of checks before I even attempt to start this up. So it's probably not even gonna be started in this video. I think first thing I need to do is give it a clean. Obviously there is some or has been some mice infestation somewhere in here. Um, the previous guy I bought it off said he, he stored it in a warehouse, so that's probably possible. You can see there's probably a cat that was living in here, or a dog, and there's a load of mice droppings in there. So, I, I feel like already ill just like looking at all this mold and stuff, so I'm going to stick a mask on, give it a good clean, and then see if we can find any mice. Oh, should we try? Let's check now. This is the cat's bed by the looks of it. It's definitely had a it's definitely had a paint job at some point because there's overspray in a lot of places. Right. Let's give this thing a good clean. These are the, what I used to comb the dog. I wonder what type of animal I did this. Definitely a cat. Okay, that's um, kind of ish clean. Got all the crap off it. Let's put that back in um, and clean some more. Okay, it looks a lot better, but still, you know, pretty disgusting. I'm gonna do a few more bits and pieces clean off camera. And then I think we'll do one last walk around because it's getting dark. The light's on, that comes on all the time. Um, do a quick walk around and then discuss what the plans are for this. Okay, so here is the rally then. Yes, that cleaning was substandard. It was just a, a little spruce up and really just to get everything out of the car to see what we're working with. Um, no, I haven't started it up. That will come probably in the next episode, hopefully. Um, but it is a lot worse than what I thought it was. A lot worse. And there's tons of mold in there, so I might get a, uh, a little mouse trap just to see if there's any mice left in there. I doubt it, because there's clearly a cat living on the back here. Um, it does look, it looks awful when I'm looking at it back in this light, but it doesn't look too bad in the daylight, he says. Um, but yeah, this is the rally project. Um, I have put, quickly just like, attached the Quicksilver arch just there, and attached the Quicksilver arch at the front. 
Um, I've looked at the springs. I don't know if they're broken or it's just down like by about a million, a million millimeters. Um, but it, it's got a really good rake on it. Kind of goes like that. Um, so I think next up is really I need to um, invite Alan round. Remember Alan from the Range Rover build um, and his welding skills to see if this is worth repairing. Um, if it's worth my time really because I'm kind of of the opinion right now after looking around at all is I've probably bitten off more than I can chew.